right after we discovered that the universe was accelerating. So in 1998, observations showed that not only is the universe expanding, but it's expanding faster and faster. So that's attributed to either Einstein's cosmological constant or some more complicated form of dark energy, some mysterious thing that fills the universe. And people were throwing around ideas about this dark energy stuff, what could it be, and so forth. Most of the people throwing around these ideas were cosmologists. They work on cosmology. They think about the universe all at once. I, you know, since I like to talk to people in different areas, I was sort of more familiar than average with what a respectable working particle physicist would think about these things. And what I immediately thought was, you know, you guys are throwing around these theories. These theories are wildly unnatural. They're super finely tuned. Like any particle physicist would just be embarrassed to be talking about this. But rather than just scoffing at them, I sat down and asked myself, okay, is there a respectable version? Is there a way to keep the particle physicist happy but also make the universe accelerate? And I realized that there is some very specific set of models that is that is relatively natural. And guess what? You can make a new experimental prediction on the basis of those. And so I did that. People were very happy about that. What was the thing that would make physicists happy that would make sense of this uh, f fragile thing that people call dark energy? So the fact that dark energy pervades the whole universe and is slowly changing that should immediately set off alarm bells because particle physics is a story of length scales and time scales that are generally, guess what? Small, <laughs> right? Particles are small, they vibrate quickly, and you're telling me now I have a new field and its typical rate of change is once every billion years, right? Like that's just not natural. And indeed, you can formalize that and say, you know, look, even if you wrote down a particle that evolved slowly over billions of years, if you let it interact with other particles at all, that would make it inter uh, in move faster, its dynamics would be faster, its mass would be higher, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a whole story. Things need to be robust and they all talk to each other in quantum field theory. So how do you stop that from happening? And the answer is symmetry. You can impose a symmetry that protects your new field from talking to any other fields, okay? And this is good for two reasons. Number one, it can keep the dynamics slow. So if you just, you can't tell me why it's slow, you just made that up, but at least it can protect it from speeding up because it's not talking to any other particles. And the other is it makes it harder to detect. Um, naively, experiments looking for fifth forces or time changes of fundamental constants of nature like the charge of the electron, these experiments should have been able to detect these dark energy fields. And I was able to propose a way to stop that from happening. The detection. The detection, yeah. To sort, because a, a symmetry could stop it from interacting with all these other fields and therefore makes it harder to detect. And just by luck, I realized, because it was actually based on my first ever paper, there's one loophole. If you impose these symmetries, so you protect the dark energy field from interacting with any other fields, there's one interaction that is still allowed that you can't rule out. And it is a very specific interaction between your dark energy field and photons, which are very common. And it has the following effect. As a photon travels through the dark energy, the photon has a polarization up, down, left, right, whatever it happens to be. And as it travels through the dark energy, that photon will rotate its polarization. This is called birefringence. And you can kind of run the numbers and say, you know, you can't make a very precise prediction because we're just making up this model. But if you want to roughly fit the data, you can predict how much polarization rotation there should be. A couple of degrees, okay? Not that much. So... That's very hard to detect. People have been trying to do it. Right now, literally, we're on the edge of either being able to detect it or rule it out using the cosmic microwave background. And there is just, you know, truth in advertising. There is a claim on the market that it's been detected, that it's there. Uh, it's not very statistically significant. If I were to bet, I think it would probably go away. It's a very hard thing to observe. But maybe as you get better and better data, cleaner and cleaner analysis, it will persist and we will have directly detected the dark energy.